To our top story, Speaker Nancy Pelosi doesn't appear to have the votes. The head of the Congressional Progressive Caucus, Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal, revealing moments ago that members of her caucus will not support the more than $1 trillion bipartisan infrastructure bill unless they reach an agreement with Senate moderates on a second, even larger reconciliation bill. In fact, she says that bill needs to pass both chambers first. Joining us now is the vice chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus, Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee of Texas. Congresswoman, thank you for being with us. It's a busy, busy day there on Capitol Hill, and so much for this country is on the line right, right now. What's going to happen next? Well, Anna, first of all, thank you for having me. Let me give you a bit of good news, and that is uh, that yesterday, mid-morning, early morning, we didn't have the votes for uh, the uh, elevating uh, of the debt, uh, providing debt relief, something that is done um, every year, uh, done by uh, Mitch McConnell in 2019 when he said America cannot default. Isn't that interesting? Uh, and done under the Constitution, dealing with full faith and credit. We won that with 219 votes for the American people, including uh, a Republican. It was bipartisan. I am an optimist as it relates to what happens on behalf of the American people. What I think is next is this. Frankly, uh, we cannot move forward on the INVEST Act. As a member of the Budget Committee, we had a all day and into the night markup on Saturday to be prepared to move the Build Back Better Act. We worked for the American people. We worked for paid leave. We worked for child care, K-12 to, uh, to uh, or uh, early childhood education. We worked for the climate change, which people, some people have said they cannot live without. So I think the next step will be that we extend our work week. We continue to work, uh, and we acknowledge that the INVEST Act is important. It's important to my constituents in the state of Texas and the nation. But it will not be my way or the highway, and it will not be what we can do today uh, we won't do we'll push off until tomorrow. And that's what is being told to us about Bill Back, not our speaker, who has been working without ceasing uh, for us to move forward. But I think what will uh, need to happen is cooler heads will prevail, uh, and we'll get a number from the Senate. And we have not gotten a number to be able to craft a Bill Back better well, Manchin, act. Senator Manchin just said today his top line is $1.5 Is that something you can work with? Well, his top line of beginning. Uh, and what he's saying is he's telling the president of the United States, uh, the leader of the nation, and frankly, the leader of the Democratic Party, uh, that he's not willing to sit down with him uh, and cooperate on what might be the best number. He has a number, but what is the best number? And I think that's going to take work. And good. I think it is good that Senator Manchin has said uh, 1.5 in terms of a starting point. We have Senator Cinema as well. And so what is her number? Or is she ceding to his number? We are legislators. And right. I don't think we can cede to the point of leaving out millions of Americans who are desperate for federal uh, Medicaid program, desperate for child care. And we can't leave them out. And that I hear means you. that we... I hear you, number. Congresswoman. Respectfully, I, I, I understand that you are working really hard to get that additional investment for your constituents. But right now, the bipartisan infrastructure bill does provide your state of Texas a lot. $27 billion for roads, more than $500 million to repair bridges, $3 billion for public transportation, $408 million for electric car changing stations, um, you know, $100 million for broadband internet, for example. Senators Manchin and Cinema, they already passed that in the Senate. Can your caucus afford to be the reason that that is held hostage, that it could potentially fail? They could end up with nothing at all. Um, it won't fail uh, because we'll have the opportunity to um, pause, not put it on the floor, frankly, um, and give us the opportunity, Anna, uh, to um, do as you are so rightly saying, provide those dollars for our constituents, but not leave uh, the working and unworking women of America standing on the highway of despair. Working women or women were the highest number of victims of COVID-19 as it relates to the workforce. And we're trying to restore that with the care economy, but climate change was left out of the Invest Act. And everyone acknowledges my state, the freeze that killed 150 people. So here's what I think is important. We haven't walked away. We're walking toward a negotiation. The president needs to give us more time. 
the president needs to uh, reinforce with the Senate and these two senators in particular, if they're representing others, that they need to have a reasonable number to come to the table uh, to be able to make sure uh, that we have the Invest Act and build back. We're not walking away from either of them. We need a little bit more time. We can get more time. Don't put the bill on the floor and allow us to work and get more time on behalf of the American people. I think that's the most crucial state. I will never abandon my constituents or the nation. The Republicans abandoned their nation yesterday when only one Republican would not uh, raise uh, the debt limit consistent with the Constitution and the protection of the general welfare of the American people. We, uh, the governing party, are not going to do that. But we're not going to abandon persons who most likely cannot speak for themselves. And why don't you listen to what we heard from Joe Manchin just this morning? Take a listen. There's a shame for that because no two bills should ever be linked together to the point to where you're going to let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Never. I've never. I've been around for an awful long time in state and now in federal politics, and that should never be the case. Why not pass the bill everyone agrees on? That's going to provide help for all Americans. And then negotiate the reconciliation bill. Anna, let me tell you, we've already compromised because the Invest Act and Build Back were one bill. But what happened is, out of compromise and respect for those who had a difference of opinion, of priorities, they got separated. Well, that and was so Speaker we, Pelosi who separated, though, right? She's the one who uncoupled them. She's the one who made this self-imposed deadline of when the vote was going to take place today. So was that a mistake? No, it certainly was not, because she was acting as both a legislator and a leader. Because what happened is, the bills were together in our initial that was the president's agenda. It was an infrastructure, what we call the nuts and bolts. And then he was uh, advocating for the care economy. They were one bill. But what happened is, this is before, what happened was the insistence of we couldn't go on this one. And so what was directed is a group of uh, members, senators, uh, not related to any of the jurisdictional committees, uh, just got together and formed this partnership for the INVEST Act. But this was already one bill. And so it's not where we're separating, we're just putting them back together. And I insist, and those who believe that we're acting on behalf of the president's agenda and the American people, 96% uh, uh, believe in this Build Back Act. I would say to Senator Manchin, let's sit down at a table, let your number go beyond 1.5. Let us help West Virginians, let us help Arizonians, and let's help the nation. That's where we are. And if we don't have the vote count, there is nothing that we can, um, in terms of turning subtle salts to do it, but we can be optimistic to say that we'll stay in the room and we'll continue working until we get these bills ready to be passed for the American people. With the president's effort and work, that must be included. i just give you this one example. I think uh, What do you LBJ, mean that must be included? You don't think he's, he's doing enough yet? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that must be included in on the ongoing process. This is Thursday. It must be included Friday or Saturday or Sunday. But LBJ didn't have the votes for the 1964 Civil Rights Act, 65 Voting Rights Act. But you have to get in there, and we have to tell members that this is for the nation. And that's what happened, and we changed America. These bills will change America. We've got to get in the room, make the difference, work with the speaker who's been doing an outstanding job, and the president has been doing so. But we must work such in the House, the president can work effectively with Leader Schumer in the United States Senate. Those senators must give a number that will bring us to the table. Just plain and simple. It's not for me, it's for our fellow Americans. Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee, I really appreciate your time. Thanks so much for joining us. Anna, thanks for having me. Good to be with you.